Hey guys, what is up? It's Biff, and this is Fearless Mods, and as you saw in the last episode, we finally figured out our no-start condition, so we at least have this baby running again. So, it's baby steps. Two forward, one back. I've got this fuse adapter in here, but I can put my amp clamp on here now in the fuse block on this ignition circuit and I'm going to be able to determine what my current draw is for the secondary uh, in the coil. I've still got my reference number one cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and get my computer set up here, plug the Pico in and power it up. Plug in my new secondary coil with amp clamp. Let's see what we get. Okay, we're getting good oscillations when the, the uh, coil starts to fire the secondary. It ramps up nicely and then discharges. Ramps up, discharges into cylinder one. But it looks like the coil is doing okay here. Still continue to look into this. I've been watching a lot of Scanner Danner on YouTube trying to sort this out. So with the pigtail plugged into the control module and the engine running, A is my battery voltage. I'm sitting at 13.6 volts while I'm running. B is that ignition control signal. So these two are going to the primary circuit, right? So when this closes the switch, drawing the battery voltage down, it still stays above 12 for the duration of that being closed. And the voltage here in the other side of the circuit, it also is sitting at battery voltage until the switch closes. It drops to zero while it's building charge in that primary circuit. And then when this switch closes, it discharges all of that into the yellow line here. You get your, your spark burn, and then it drops back down to battery voltage until that switch closes for the next cylinder. All a while, my ground stays at zero volts, which means I have a good ground. So A, B, C, and D all behaving as we would expect for this ignition control module, which tells me that the primary side of this coil should be operating normally. The one other one I will bring up and show you is when I check the coil wire as a secondary circuit and when I check the plug wires as a secondary circuit, I'm not getting as good of a spark line on either one of those. Maybe it could still be a secondary circuit in the coil causing my problem. And on top of that, I start to see these ramps happening in here. We got all kinds of craziness going on. This doesn't drop down to zero ever before the next cycle starts. So you don't get this firing line. And what I believe is happening, we've started to build up heat in the coil and stress it out to the point where it's starting to, to, to uh, as I've said, fall apart. Coil, no firing line. Spark, no firing line. So what is it? Is the coil actually working until it starts to fail because the Opti isn't distributing all the power out and so it's retaining it until it gets to the point of failure? Or is it actually the secondary side within the coil that is failing, but that is shit and so therefore so is this. But why is this shit? Is it because we've already stressed it out enough by not properly distributing those sparks out through the Opti. I know that my ignition control module that I've now replaced twice, the other one was probably good too, um, that it's, it appears to be working uh, properly, absolutely properly. That would mean that I have either a cap or a rotor problem or a coil problem. I think I've got it narrowed down to those three things. I think uh, I might go at the coil first. It turns out I got this thing over three years ago, time flies. Um, but it is the Duralast cheap version. We are going to go for uh, an upgrade to at least an AC Delco. Uh, I replaced the coil, quick easy job on this car. We will see uh, if this coil actually took care of that secondary problem by letting this thing go ahead and run and uh, monitoring for any more um, failures in the coil or the secondary ignition system. So what we have here is pretty much a live run. I put a trigger on the number one cylinder. I do find it interesting that for the 
secondary on the coil, you see all the pieces of the ignition process, whereas for the secondary on the plug wire, you don't get all of those same ignition processes. You just get the spark plug fire. This is very low resolution. We'll be able to look more closely at it. So the primary voltage coming from the ignition control module, module at, at this resolution looks fine. In the coil secondary, you see some consistent firing lines here. You actually get some higher fire li firing lines here, which is interesting, and then they start to come back down again. And in that same area where we're getting the higher firing lines, we're getting a dip down here on the baseline. See how we're looking here real time. The primary is looking pretty good. Our secondary, we're starting to get these ramps. You can see them in here every now and then, like this. And our spark lines are not looking good. So this clearly to me now looks like something in the secondary. Okay, so there you have it guys. We replaced the coil and it has improved our position on how this is running, but we still have an issue going on in the secondary. Next thing we're gonna do is get into the OptiSpark, check those signals, make sure that we're solid there. And after that, if that all checks out or if it points to something, most likely we're gonna be digging into the OptiSpark. So that's gonna be a wrap for this episode. I hope you enjoyed digging into the coil and a little bit of the PicoScope um, diagnostics of the ignition system. You're gonna to have to keep watching to see how this turns out. So thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. We'll catch you again real soon. Take care.